When Ghost of Tsushima was released, some claimed that it was better than Assassin's Creed. So as a mega Assassin's Creed fan, I got curious. Is Ghost of Tsushima really a better game, and if so, better than which Assassin's Creed entry exactly? To discover the answer, I decided to play the game. Tsushima's story is loosely based on real-world events, mainly the Mongol invasion. It is not trying to replicate historical events as accurately as Assassin's Creed, and because of that, the creators at Sucker Punch Productions had more creative freedom to tell a tale not completely bound and faithful to real-world events. Therefore, the two games cannot be compared in this aspect. However, both do a phenomenal job at what they're offering. The main villain in Tsushima is called Kodun Khan. He's a fictional character leading the Mongol army in Tsushima and aims to capture the island using fear, force, and manipulation. Whether through cutscenes or set pieces, the game makes sure that Kodun's presence is always felt. A constant reminder of your ultimate task, which is driving the enemy forces out of your homeland. A proper villain with a decent characterization is something that the last four entries in Assassin's Creed severely lacked. Part of that problem is due to the fact that in those games you're tasked to discover the identity of a massive number of targets before finally learning about their leader. Although credit where it's due, Origins did a fine job at portraying characters, especially compared to the newer games. But for anything past that title, the vast majority of the villains felt like fillers and regular enemies. The problem is you'll learn about these enemies in small chunks that are scattered all over the world, and most of their villainy either occurred before we met them in the game or happened off-screen. And due to the fact that you have to gather evidence to discover their identity, in the long run you may even forget about them entirely, so you'd have to read all the evidence you've collected from a specific menu. That is, if you simply haven't lost interest in them. There's almost no reason to hate or to be interested in most of these villains, because they're often written as a cartoonish, one-sided character with a pure evil personality. They're secluded and separated from each other, the world, and the main character. Although not all of them are handled this way, since there are less than a handful of villains with a somewhat decent story, but the majority suffer from this problem. Despite that, you never feel a constant threat and the shadow of these villains over your head. You never understand how severe your character's situation could be in the latest AC games. This is where quality over quantity shines. Ghost of Tsushima doesn't have a long list of bad guys for you to defeat. There's the main villain, and your ultimate goal is to defeat him, and then there are some other antagonists who will gradually show their true face to you, and then you get to fully understand their motives and see the world through their eyes. Tsushima does a great job revealing information about characters at the right moment. The story is moderately paced, and it's sold in three acts, four if we count the Iki Island expansion, which is crucial in understanding Jin Sakai's past. Speaking of Jin's character, how does he and the support characters fare compared to AC games? Jin has a clear goal, to drive the enemy out of his home one way or another, with or without honor. He's often calm and tries to stay rational when confronting obstacles. At first, he might seem like a cold or even bland character who doesn't talk that much, but by the second act, he'll eventually open up and we'll learn a great deal about him. This is comparable to almost every other AC. In regards to main characters, they all do a phenomenal job at portraying your protagonists and setting a clear goal for them. However, the more recent games have a bit of an issue with character writing. Due to the massive size of these games, there are tons of different dialogue options and sometimes the characters have a shift in personality during different quests, which creates a kind of dissonance for the player. The interesting thing about Jin's backstory is that being raised as a samurai in a noble family constantly toys with his conscience giving him a sense of guilt over his dishonorable actions during the fights. Everything Jin does is against his radical uncle's teachings. He constantly remembers how doing what he is doing now is considered cowardly, and that he is tarnishing the name of both his family and the samurai. Jin doesn't want to disappoint his uncle, yet he doesn't want to fail his people either. He goes from struggling with this idea to the end justifying the means in the span of the story, and this sort of a struggle he experiences creates interesting conflicts throughout his journey. Conflicts that separate friend from foe and add a layer of dynamic to Jin Sakai's character. 
Speaking of dynamics, the portrayal of support characters, especially during their own storylines, is so well done that not only you will learn more about their past, but you will also learn how they would handle situations in crisis times. On top of that, you'll also find out what they think about the ghost, which is Jean's new personality to create fear among enemies. Sometimes, depending on the type of character they are, they might support what you're doing, but other times they remind you of your roots and warn you that this path might lead to destruction. This form of dynamic helps you understand more about the character's past, the world, and how others perceive Jean. While in every Assassin's Creed game there are loads of different characters, in a game like Mirage most of the characters become irrelevant once you get past Alamut. They become normal quest givers who add nothing of value to the story and some of them even remain forgotten till the end. Valhalla did a lot better in this regard. Even Odyssey had some fun side characters, but lately this has become the trend with the series where you are introduced to an interesting character and then they'll remain forgotten or turned into a normal quest giver till the end. But enough of this story. One of the most important aspects of Ghost of Tsushima, the source of all the controversies, is found within its gameplay loop. The loop is completely different than the modern Assassin's Creed games and perhaps that's one of the many reasons why the classic AC fans prefer Sucker Punch's creation over their favorite franchise. Tsushima offers a straightforward loop. It's an action-adventure game set in an open world where there's no level-based progression to experience missions. The exact opposite of action RPGs where you have to reach a certain level and XP to proceed through quests. You have a main mission list to follow, and you can absolutely only play through them and be done with the game. The optional content is not forced on the player, but if you choose to experience them, your main character becomes equipped with better weapons, utilities, and armor, and all of that would grant you a better combat experience as well. On the contrary, Valhalla, Odyssey, and Origins all ask you to complete most of the optional stuff before going through the main content. That is if you don't want to get obliterated by the enemies, or don't want them to turn into spongy beasts where you need to hit each of them 100 times at least to go through half of their health bar. Although Mirage tried stepping away from this design and had a simpler progression, a bare bones and linear one at that too. The world of Tsushima, the island itself, is not a small by any means, but compared to the RPG trilogy, it's certainly smaller and more focused. The biome diversity from the golden trees to bamboo woods, all the way up to the cold and snowy mountains, feel extremely distinct and pleasant. Although every Assassin's Creed game has always featured some of the best looking worlds ever, so the competition is tight between the two franchises. The graphics and visuals in Tsushima look pretty realistic, and the creators managed to make some of the most astonishing frames possible. It's really easy to see the amount of love and care poured into each scene. It's clear how much they were inspired by legendary movies such as Seven Samurai when creating this game. My favorite world compared to Tsushima among modern ACs is England in Valhalla, since it's extremely varied, vast, and beautiful and I constantly get immersed in it whenever I play the game. However, Tsushima appreciates its universe by presenting some of the most beautiful scenery and set pieces you can imagine during your explorations, stuff that always rewards your curiosity. Chasing an NPC for a certain item would make you follow them in places you normally wouldn't go, and going there could reward you with a gorgeous view of the world alongside the items you wanted. This epic sense of standing on top of the world with the wind blowing through Jean's cape while gazing over the horizon remains unmatched to this day. Speaking of rewards, hovering over missions on the map tells you exactly what sort of reward is awaiting you, so you can go in a mission with a certain expectation. Sometimes that can be useful for those who don't like to 100% complete a game's content. While this might cause players to skip some good portion of a game's content, at the same time it could act as a time saver for them as well. Unlike AC in Tsushima, not all of the map is filled with icons from the beginning. This is to prevent players from feeling overwhelmed with the amount of content from the start, something that Origins and Odyssey failed at miserably, but Valhalla and Mirage tried to fix it with small UI changes that were ultimately effective as well. So as you progress through the campaign in Tsushima, side stuff gradually pops up on the map and occasionally NPCs guide you to different locations with new and interesting stuff to discover. Completing missions grants you cosmetics, charms and sometimes on rare occasions, new tools and utilities. 
There's no level-based progression in Tsushima, but completing missions increases your legend status and by earning enough points, you can unlock skills for Jin that can enhance gameplay in a variety of ways. From combat to exploration, you can make them more enjoyable. There's a lot to do in the world of Tsushima. Fortunately, everything Jin does is either related to his personality as a character or relates to saving his homeland from the enemy. You can slice bamboo in a certain way to grow your resolve, increasing your chances during the fights to heal or use the ghost stat aka Jin's Rage Mode ability. You can visit certain places to complete haiku or enter hot springs that result in Jin reflecting on life, which sometimes increases his health bar or unlocks something new for him. Following foxes to shrines unlock more slot for equipping charms, and completing certain shrines, which involve Jin following through a puzzle platforming section, utilizes the parkour mechanic. Liberating occupied outposts with the ability to replay them as much as you want adds more value to the gameplay, and you can also challenge tough enemies in duels. Alongside that, offering what you have collected across the world to certain merchants allows you to unlock unique upgrades or new cosmetics. Although, since I mentioned it, it's worth noting that the parkour in Tsushima is nowhere near as good as it is in Assassin's Creed, since it is way too simplified and feels like a barebones version of Assassin's Creed 3 parkour. You can't find the level of freedom and the smoothness of movement found in every Assassin's Creed game in Tsushima, which is a bit disappointing given the fact that Jin, unlike the modern AC characters, has a dedicated jump button, and on top of that, he has a grappling hook and can scale buildings too. There's also something else in Tsushima that despite looking cool, I didn't find it as efficient as I thought it would be, and that is the guiding wind system. I believe it's one of the best looking GPS in gaming, but the looks overshadow the usefulness, to the point that I often found myself pausing the game and looking at the map to find where I should go next. Sure, the minimal and clean UI elements that allow you to see the world for what it truly is look awesome, but efficiency is more important, and I believe the compass system in the modern AC games works much better, since it can highlight important stuff around you properly and would pin your selected destination better. Of course, you would have to use the map in those games as well, but sometimes I just couldn't see where the wind was guiding me, and the confusion only started to fade away slightly by the end of my experience with Ghost of Tsushima. Other than that, there are multiple mission types in Tsushima, ranging from tailing missions to tracking down clues and silently crossing through areas without notifying guards. Regardless, in most cases, many missions of the game could lead to fights with the enemies, which players usually have the choice of going in stealthy or fighting honorably, like a samurai. But how does Ghost of Tsushima handle the stealth and combat encounters? Doing a stealth is much harder at the beginning of the game due to Jin's lack of utility and abilities. As you progress, however, you can upgrade his knife, which changes the assassination animations and speed. You can also start unlocking more stealth tools along the way. This gives you a sense of character progression while also making the stealth much more viable. The stealth tools are decent, with a couple of bows for different enemy types and also a few throwables. The tools and options are not too different from Assassin's Creed, and since the stealth was always the bread and butter of the franchise with a few exceptions, I would say, mechanically speaking, they're not too different if not a bit better in Assassin's Creed. But the AI is extremely dumb in both series and it's not really that hard to learn the enemy pattern and how to trick them. Other than that, some stealth missions in Tsushima could result in an instant failure state that drags you back to a checkpoint if you fail to follow the conditions of a mission. This is single-handedly one of the biggest issues with Tsushima and ruins the immersion. Fortunately, this type of mission design is not very common in the game, but here is another point that the modern AC games got right, and that is getting rid of the insta-fail mission design that could become extremely annoying in the past games. However, combat is where Tsushima truly shines. Jin only has access to one melee weapon, and that is his katana. But there are multiple combat stances designed for different enemy types and you will need to take down enemy leaders to unlock more stances. The idea behind killing more leaders to learn new stances is that by observing enemy forces, Jin learns more about their combat tactics and in return, he can create a counterattack that works perfectly well against them. Not only Jin as a character is capable of strategizing his way in combat, but the game also wants players to use a strategy to fight enemies. Sure, you can just go through enemies by mashing the same button and win the fights, but they would become much more enjoyable once you figure out how to take them down efficiently without wasting time or taking damage. It's important to use the right stance for the right enemy, but you can also upgrade your stances and add more depth and layer to each fight, making them more enjoyable as a result. 
As Jean's legend of the ghost increases, he becomes more powerful and at the same time his enemies might flee the fight more frequently as well. Although not all of the enemies would always flee the scene. The enemy variety is good and with the addition of new enemy types in the expansion, the game keeps a good balance between the quality of challenge and the quantity of enemies. You would often find yourself in cases where you're surrounded by a group of enemies and have to be careful to not get attacked simultaneously by an archer or a swordsman and remain always on the move. The core concept of the combat is to deflect and parry as much as you can, and by the end, after getting used to the timing of the attacks, you can become a master at Tsushima's combat. On the other hand, the combat in the RPG trilogy Assassin's Creed is actually quite good. You have tons of weapon variety with different classes of melee weapon that can keep the fights interesting for a long period of time, and it also allows you to roleplay much better. There are also skills that you can activate during the fights, which are very handy, but the fighting with different weapons is not as in-depth as Tsushima. Since the combat direction in both series is designed for different kinds of experiences, a one-to-one -one comparison is a bit hard, but a game that can be compared to Tsushima would be Mirage. Basim is an assassin and the devs tried not to put a lot of focus on combat. Therefore, he can only carry a sword, although you can collect different kinds of sword, but the combat system in Mirage is extremely simplified and lackluster and can't even compete to the older games of its own series. Some of the things that make the combat in Tsushima stand out even more is the cinematic frames and feeling, polished animations, and the detailed sword fights. Every fight feels heavy, and you can feel the character's weight in their movement and their attacks. Despite having less variety in weaponry, the combat animations are not as light and dull as they are in the Assassin's Creed games. With all of that being said, now it's the time to answer the question posed at the beginning of the video. Is this game really better than Assassin's Creed? Ghost of Tsushima plays everything safe. From its gameplay design to the open world structure, it doesn't bring anything new to the gaming space. It doesn't try to reinvent anything or push the gaming forward. Instead, Tsushima utilizes whatever was proven successful before to tell its story through a unique lens with its own touch. And the game does it pretty well too. The gameplay loop is completely inspired by the older AC games, and to me, it's a what-if scenario that would happen if Ubisoft released a Japan-based AC game after Assassin's Creed 3 or maybe even Black Flag. Does safe equal bad? Certainly not. Sometimes the proven methods could yield unexpected results compared to the unique stuff that is pushing the gaming forward constantly. It's not always necessary for games to reinvent the wheel. But let's not forget something. One of the reasons Assassin's Creed started to change was due to the fact that the formula started to go stale. Many of the players didn't enjoy playing the same style of game in a new setting annually. So that's one of the many reasons the series started to change. Even though Mirage tried going back to the old formula, Mila for a short while, many AC fans, including myself, didn't appreciate the backward evolution. But is Tsushima better than the entire Assassin's Creed franchise? I would say no, it's not. Assassin's Creed is not only famous because of its gameplay loop. There are factors such as the lore, modern time, parkour, stealth, historical accuracy, and beloved characters that make the series stand out from the crowd. Obviously, Tsushima does not try to go for any of that, and it's clearly visible from the very start of the game. But I can understand why so many prefer this game over the RPG trilogy Assassins. Many AC fans actively despise the games in the series past Syndicate for reasons such as the lack of actual assassins, heaps of uninteresting content in a ginormous map, the quality of animations and cutscenes and gameplay, and most importantly, the RPG mechanics to name a few. There are even those who don't like the modern time storyline and the animus segments. On the other hand, Tsushima makes you feel like a badass samurai while also having a secondary identity as the ghost. The ghost's personality is an unpredictable stealthy warrior with no remorse for his enemies during open combat. This alone sounds closer to an assassin's characterization compared to Cassandra and Eivor combined, who constantly reminded us that they are not assassins and have no intention of joining the creed. Ghost of Tsushima offers a straightforward campaign with no monetization, no grind for XP, a linear story progression and a rewarding gameplay loop with authentic optional side content that actually makes sense from the story's perspective to exist. It has great combat and a solid story pacing, something that even I can agree that the recent AC games had serious trouble with. But that's the thing, Tsushima is only better than the recent Assassin's Creed games, only in some aspects. It's arguably one of the best looking games 
games of the past few years, but gameplay wise, it's more the same thing we had over 10 years ago. Jin might not be the best written character of all time, but his struggles to go from a samurai to a ruthless killer and the people responsible for his transformation will remain one of the game's highlights for me. And whether you're an Assassin's Creed fan or not, I highly recommend playing this game. Especially if you want to feel like a badass samurai, this game is not going to disappoint. Ghost of Tsushima, unlike the RPG trilogy, knows what it wants to be and doesn't actively try to push its core identity away in favor of something it is not. Perhaps that's partly because Tsushima is the only entry in the series. But regardless, for these reasons, this game is better than the recent Assassin's Creed titles. In any case, if you want to learn more about Assassin's Creed games, check these videos out.